And it is the one year anniversary of Slime Champ. And chat reminded me of that, which is why I'm now streaming this. It's AI Dungeon again, the last one of 2020. It was a good 2020 for AI Dungeon at least. Um, I did a number of AI Dungeons this year and, and they were very entertaining. We had Clear Fluid. Last year we had Like a Champ. We had, um, oh my god, we had Wharf. Uh, there was elves turning into uh, reindeer. Not the best option. So AI Dungeon has given us many gifts, like Ikea as well. What will it do for us this year? I don't know. But I can tell you that there's a bunch of updates. A lot of updates. Like, they're updating this game almost every day. So even though the game now has to be kind of paid for to get the good AI, they're not cheaping it out. Like, there's huge amounts of updates. And I'm really happy about that. So every time I play this, it almost feels like there's a ton of different stuff. Like, here's the updates just for December alone. Mental. Well, let's dive in, shall we? Let's try a new... Let's just have some fun. I don't know what I'm gonna do. Who cares? All right, so we have the option. At some point, I'm going to do Cyberpunk just for the glitches, but we're going to do um, custom. It is New Year's Eve. Your name is John Scoot Duck Marine. You are with your friends in the village 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 known as Hoor Island not long before the ball is to drop a strange ship pulls into the dock. <laughs> that was a typo. D it's the O and the I are right next to each other on the keyboard chat. A man steps out and walks up to you. Hello, he says, I am Captain Hook. You look at him for a moment, wondering what his intentions are. He doesn't seem hostile or aggressive. It's almost like he wants to talk first. Say, quack. I am Scoot. Welcome. Welcome to our Humbel Island. What can I do for you? He looks around. Well, I was hoping that we could all get together and have a good time tonight. You shake your head. No, no, not yet. We need to be ready for the ball. Captain Hook smiles. Oh? Well, why don't you come on down to my boat? Seems... fishy. I don't know about that. You shake your head. I don't like the way this feels. I don't know you. You, you want us to come with you? Captain Hook frowns in a get-real manner. He turns to leave, and in an instant, there are pirates everywhere! You're about to leap into action when Captain Hook raises a hand. We have to see what happens. I can't believe the real Captain Hook has invaded Hoor Island. Staring at his hand, you notice something odd. It looks charred. His hand looks burnt, but oddly enough, does not seem to be affecting his ability to move it. In fact, without looking up, he snaps his fingers and a small pirate runs up next to him. Captain Hook is about to grab him when you quickly formulate a plan. Hmm. Chat, what's the plan? Help me figure out how to defeat Captain Hook.
throw snowballs? Eat him. I'm Scoot. Offer weed to smoke. I don't know why we're doing this, but okay. Let's see if Captain Hook wants to smoke some dankness. Weed? Yes, sirree! Give us some weed! Sensing an opportunity, you begin to search your pockets. You know you've got some somewhere. Fumbling around, you realize it must have fallen out in the scuffle when you were captured. With a, with a sigh, you look up at Captain Hook and shake your head. I don't have any on me, but I have some in my house. May I go get it? for you. This is a perfect opportunity, chat. My plan is I'm going to go to the house, and I'm going to get Scoot's gun, and then I'm going to shoot Captain Hook in the face. The captain tilts his head as if thinking about it for a moment, but then flashes a toothy grin. Sure thing. You go get it, and then you can all come with me for a party. He turns and whistles, calling back over his shoulder as he hands, sorry, heads down to the boat. Perfect. Okay. Head back home and grab my weed stash. <laughs> weed stash, like a mustache. It's just like, just like nugs across the face above the beak. You head back to the village. It seems almost peaceful with almost no one around, but it's probably best you go straight home and grab your stash. Plus, you don't want to run into any guards right now. They might not take too kindly to you being in a boat with a bunch of pirates. Get weed and return to the captain. Oh fuck, I forgot my gun! Oh! There goes my gun! You make your way to your house, slide in, run straight for the drawer where you keep your weed. After grabbing it, you head out and scurry back towards the dock. As you approach, there's a bit of a crowd around something. You push through and find it's the pirates, and they're all dead. Horribly mutated. What the fuck? Hey. Drake. What happened here? That's not the right music for this. What's the name of the Final Fantasy VI song that plays in the, um... Yeah, they're mutilated. Um, he looks up distractedly. No, not World of Ruin, in the towns when things are fucked up. FF6 Omen? No, 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 Um, from that day on... I need the song for this. He looks up distractedly from his position, drooling over some sort of shiv that he's holding, spots you and brandishes it at you. Scoot, you're alive. I thought we'd hang out until you showed up. You eye the makeshift knife nervously, then shrug it off. Yeah, sure, but what's all this? I can't believe Drake killed all the pirates. You wave your hand at the carnage behind you. Hmm? Drake asks and then looks back. Oh, yeah, uh, them. Well, he shifts uncomfortably and holds up the knife again. Can't believe this. You take the hint and redirect the conversation. So, I, I got weed. You pull it out of your pocket, forgetting that it was November. It's not November. The leaves begin rustling loudly in the wind, making Drake look over at them for a moment. He perks up instantly. Oh, well, let's get high then. Wh what the fuck? Drake suggests. What about guards, you ask? Drake laughs. I'm the captain of the Black Hooks. There's no such thing as discipline in this crew. If I say we're having a party, then that's what we're doing. The two of you trudge back to your house, lit cigarette in hand. Man, I wonder what happened to Captain Hook. Did you shank that motherfucker too?
Drake shakes his head, takes a long hit off the cigarette. Hell no, he outsailed the rest of us. The guy's tough enough to stay alive without three of his ribs. It took forever to find this boat, too. Hope Hannon doesn't take it out again, at least. He starts laughing. What? How did you remove three of his ribs? Who the fuck is Hannon? He shrugs with a wry smile. Revenge, man. Revenge. He deserves it? Deserves it. Drake guffaws in disbelief. The guy made me walk the plank! He deserved way worse than just three ribs. With that, he stands up and heads off towards the direction of your door. Man, I don't know if I'm comfortable with you coming over right now. I... I'm going to tell Mayor Vine what happened here. You are scaring me, man. Not only am I snitching, but I have a self-insert as well. The worst things I could have done. He turns and stares at you, a genuine look of concern on his face. Scaring you? He asks in surprise. You look away from him and nod quietly. I just think I need to, you know, look out for myself right now, like, like how I should have three years ago. His face falls as his shoulders slouch. Three years ago? What happened on that fateful day? Cormac, don't be like this. I'm your friend, I swear to God. Cormac! The weed is making me paranoid, that's all. I know you're my friend, you respond. You look back at him and try to smile. He smiles back, though it looks forced. Yeah, of course I am. I, Scoot, I, John, Scoot, Cormac, am your friend. I, I, John, Scoot, Cormac, am your friend. Yes, but what? you've done is unforgivable. Vine will kick you off the island. Drake guffaws and cracks his knuckles, yeah? And tell him what? That I killed three no-name drunks for no reason? Oh my god. Um, I was gonna shoot the pirates, but they were- they seemed like nice- I didn't mutilate them, I wasn't gonna mutilate them. He'll kick you off the island, Drake shakes his head and turns away from you in frustration. Tell him what you want, I guess. I don't give a crap anymore. Maybe this is all for the best. Finally, we'll get some professionals in charge who know what the hell they're doing. With those final words, he stalks off toward the woods. You call out to him, but he doesn't turn around. Scoot goes... travels to Mayor Vine's house to tell him the news of the mutilation. Oh, 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 you, you travel. Oh, fuck. I screwed that up. We'll see what happens then, I guess. Mayor Vine agrees that this sounds like a serious threat and tells you to gather three more of your friends and help out. Help wipe out the rest of the Black Hooks. A week passes without incident until one night when you notice a small rowboat approaching the docks by your house. Two men wielding cutlasses get out, begin scaling the wall. Drake, is that you? I don't want to fight you. You were... my brother. You were, okay, like a brother to me. Quack.
we now pit Drake and Scoot against each other. The two men appear in hoods, although one seems to just be John. You have them drop their weapons upon realizing this. Cormac, one of them asks. It's Drake's voice, although he sounds much deeper and rougher than you were expecting him to sound. Yep. Yes, it's me. Scoot. Cormac. What are you doing? What are you doing here? Cromac. Fine. You know what? He's, he's Cromac now. That's fine. He sighs and raises his arms in defeat, dropping the cutlass on the floor. You're not with the boss? He asks nervously. We were sure you were. The figure shrugs. We hoped you might join us anyway. LLA doesn't have many friends left. You fucked up now. It's not making any sense. He sighs. Yeah. Maybe you should take us to Vine and we can talk about this like civilized people. Maybe, you reply as he moves towards the window. The figure chuckles nervously. I don't think you understand how this will play out. There's two of us and one of you. Take them to Vine to discuss the situation. Are you sure you're using the dragon model? I think I am. I'll, I'll double check after this. Take a deep breath and then exhale out of your nose, pushing with your head. The sound travels down the blade into the handle. When you hear it vibrate against his throat, you know you made a good cut. Drake falls to the ground, blood spurting down from his neck onto the dirt road. Oh well, you think. The beaver isn't going to miss him. Perhaps for the best that you two haven't met face to face. John looks shocked, but you just smile and wave at him. He sets the oars down into the boat and takes a step towards you. He opens his mouth to speak, but you raise your hand. Slice John across the face. Why not? I guess John and Scoot are now different people, so that's fine. You don't like to hurt people unless they're hurt already. What? His eyes widen in shock as the blade cuts through his cheek. Sticking out the other side of his face, he opens his mouth to speak, but all that comes out is a spray of blood and a broken tooth or two. You can now play as Luigi. Gob yells and reaches for his blade, but swings a moment too late. The curved dagger slices between his ribs and slices the inside of his lungs. Oh, God. Coming out his back in a long red streak, one more breathes minty air into your face before collapsing on the knife handle. I don't know who Gob is, but I'm just going to say, Yahoo! It's a Luigi time. It stopped making sense, so why should I? As Gob falls, you can only see one customer in there. Beauregard, one of the Black Hooks. He is wide-eyed and has gotten as pale as snow. I'm the winner. It's just gonna keep ignoring my Luigi-isms, and I don't care. It's fine. I love the name Beauregard, by the way. He looks terrified, but you managed to tell him it was a put-up job. It takes several exchanges before he calms down enough to listen. When all the men John send are taken care of, he ushers the both of you out of the pool hall and into his apartment above it. I... Chat, what do I do? What, what, I'm so confused now. This story has gone completely off the rails. Suplex? Alright, I did just watch The Expanse's newest episode, and, and holy fuck, 
suplex. Beauregard into the fourth dimension. You and John sit down and talk things over. Before the night is over, you've managed to convince him to ally with the dead man, figuring it's better to be on his good side. You've also convinced him that an alliance with the Black Hooks would be mutual benef mutually beneficial. They need all the friends they can get. Who's the dead man now? I, I, I knew we could find common ground. This piece is what all true warriors strive for. So wait, Scoot split from John Scoot into John and Scoot. And then they made peace with each other. You open your eyes to see John looking at you strangely. What? The big man speaks gingerly. I've never known you to be so compassionate before. You laugh and get off the bed. Bed? What, what were we doing on the bed? It's opportunism, not compassion. I'm trying to use a desperate situation to my advantage. That's all. Is that the kind of peace we made with each other? You stare at each other for a moment before bursting into laughter. Fair enough, John replies, still chuckling. So what's the plan? We force the Black Hooks and the remnant of the cultists to work together for mutual benefit. John curls his lip up. You really think that's going to work? Ah. Two enemy forces just don't add up to a powerful force. Doesn't need to, you grin. We just need them... We need them just strong enough to act as a bit of a buffer between us and the rest of the city, that's all. While they're fighting each other, we're free to swoop in and take what we want from the weaklings. Now, get back here, stud muffin. And show me the peace that we agreed upon. It, it's not going to know, chat. It's not going to know what this is. I'll be seeing you later, love. You wave at him dismissively and motion for him to leave. With one last look of confusion, he turns around and shuts the door. Once it's shut, you leap off the bed and rush to your chest of drawers. You quickly change out of your conservative clothing into something more... Into something more what? Into something more what? Reknamaske? A tight black corset, short leather jacket, a plethora of fur accessories, and thigh-high leather boots! <laughs> this is one of your favorite outfits. Not just for comfort, but for the amount of staring and slack-jawed ogling you can inspire. What the fuck is Remnamaske? It's not a word? Are, are people looking this up? This is Scoot, by the way, chat. Does anyone need a chat name? Because I think Rem Namaske is now, um, available. i just gonna press enter and see what happens. You leap onto your bed and wait for Sightmaster Felding to arrive. <laughs> Surprising how much more fun people allow you to get away with when they think you're pretty. As the sun falls and night takes its place, three knocks on the door breaks you out of your wool gathering. Come in, you call out. I'm, I'm ready. I'm ready to exit this at a moment's notice. The door squeaks open and the sight master pokes his head through the opening as usual. He's blinking incessantly. Your presence has been requested, sire, he says pompously. <laughs> As if you needed him to tell you that, you motion him to step aside so you can make your way to the door. Of course it has. I I'm just gonna see where this goes.
Um, you sigh exas exasperatedly, as if being summoned by the king himself to an everyday occurrence. You look back to see him still standing in your doorway. Aren't you going to open that big enough for me to walk out of? Apologies, Lady Rolden. Who the fuck are these people? You are now Luigi, the Mario brother with the green overalls, who is slightly <laughs> taller. You are young, yet not grown to manhood. Although, in your case, that's not a good thing. Your father, Papa Mario, is often busy at his job all day working as a carpenter for the kingdom. And your older brother, Mario, is always off with his friends playing and causing mischief. This has left you to take care of your baby brother, Mario. <laughs> wait, 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 there's, pa there's Papa Mario, and there's older brother Mario, and then there's baby brother Mario, huh? <laughs> Go to the princess's castle. You all walk out of the house and latch the door shut. Papa goes over to have a talk with Mama a moment before walking on, leaving you and your brother in charge of the baby. You start walking the path toward into the town, which will lead to the path to the castle. I want to hold him, your brother says. Fine. You grunt. Your brother takes the basket and you keep an eye on him while walking along. You spot a toad hopping along the road. It thinks that a toad, like Super Mario Toad, is just a frog. Look, a toad, you say, pointing at it. Make it go away, your brother says. You pick up the toad and stare at it. Look, a toad! Make it go away! It doesn't do anything, it just sits there. You look around, but don't see any more toads. You bounce the toad in your hand a few times before looking at it again. It opens its mouth, but does not try to hop away. You stick your tongue and the toad jumps into your mouth. You begin to feel ill. Then the colors swirl into an into an effervescent whirlwind of trippy <laughs> good enough into an effervescent whirlwind the world around you begins begins to melt and your lizard begins to grow An effervescent whirlwind, not a. God damn it. Terrified, you begin stumbling. Then a searing pain rips through your back. You look and see that your baby brother's head has swollen to several times its size, the pressure inside crushing his fragile skull. Suddenly, in a blur of motion, something flies past you and lands next to the basket. It's your brother. He looks fine. Mario, we have terminal... Seven. It's, it's his brother Mario. It could be one of his three or four Marios in his family. You struggle to say the words from your mangled throat. Shortly after giving birth, you trail off, not wishing to recall the memory. <sighs> well, they wanted a girl, curiously enough. You begin to think about how the kingdom may change now that there are no heir. There's no heir to inherit it. What? I need to check the randomness setting, because this is just... 
I don't know what the fuck is happening anymore. The thought doesn't stay in your head for long, and suddenly a sharp pain erupts from your chest. Ah! You go, oh, dear me, that hurt! You feel cold steel on your chest and look down to find a dagger protruding through it. You need to do upkeep on the memory. Yeah, I know. There's there's a number of things I could I could do to make this better. I kind of like the randomness of it too, though. You hear a familiar laugh. The evil witch has returned. She leans in and hisses in your face. In her withered hand is the knife that stabbed you. She grabs your neck with the other hand and begins to rub them both together. She inhales deeply as if to suck something in. Ah, that's better, she says. You... You fucking stabbed me! I'm gonna... Murder you! You realize that speaking is a bit of a challenge at the moment, so you just glare at the witch. It's the curse prevention. The face- your face is met by a toothy grin from an un her unsettling face. You can feel your life force draining out through the wound. The witch seems fairly gleeful, although it's hard to tell with her wrinkled pruned face. Mario, I need you to save me. Please. Let's see if Mario wants to save his brother. Your baby brother stands there looking at you. You can see the confusion and terror in his eyes. He begins to slowly crawl towards you. Oh, it's baby Mario, but is stopped by the witch's bony leg blocking his progress. No! Her single word stabs into your chest like another knife. Do something, please! You whisper to your unborn sister? What does that mean? That doesn't mean anything. The witch takes her leg off of your brother and gives him a little kick. Get over here, boy! Your papa wants attention! Your brother slowly crawls over to you and the witch gives him a big smile. That's a good boy. Now we can spend... Now we can all spend time to... She stops and turns her head as if hearing a noise only she can. The king approaches! Quick! We must away! With that, she pops out of existence. You're left on the ground, bleeding in, in pain. You see your brother crawling back to you, though, thankfully. Save me, brother. Please. Your brother slowly crawls over to you and inspects your wounds. He puts his tiny hands around the knife, but it's just too big for him to get out. Blood comes out and spurts around his hands as he struggles to pull it out. I'm, I'm dying. Mario. Mario. Please. Live a good life for both of us. There will... Be another Luigi. Tears run down your brother's face. As he fails to remove the knife, you reach your hand up and rub his tiny head. The effort seems to put a pained look on your face. Soon there is no movement. You take one final breath and lay still on the cold stone floor. Your big brother has been dead for at least five minutes now. <laughs> what?! You... respawn... Re rep spawn respawn as Luigi 2. A new brother. Yeah, it's like this family just has so many brothers that they just keep naming Luigi and Mario. So when a Mario dies or a Luigi dies, it's another of the brothers that goes in his stead. 
Your brother seemingly ignores your presence, still in shock. He doesn't even laugh at you like he would normally. You walk over the spot in the ground where you bled out as Mario. Incidentally, it seems that every time somebody dies, they appear there. You look around and see that many other ghosts now litter the ancient hospital floor. I guess Mario was Luigi the whole time. What? I don't, I don't, I don't know uh, what to do anymore. Am, am I dead? Who really died that day? Yeah, we gotta do a new story. This is just ridiculous. The hospital floor does have a list of rules. Um, they are surprisingly impartial. Of course, there's the usual... Do not spontaneously explode, but also things like, do not harass the new guys, do not steal other people's belongings. Most notable is a section titled Hall of Fame. This part of the rules is taking up the largest area on the board. There are six names there, with yours following soon. A ghost approaches you. His skin is turning blue and he has defined muscles under his armor. He has a spiked club hovering next to him. So you're the new guy, huh? He asks gruffly. Am I dead? I have to see this through a little bit. It, not muscles like, like, you know, your arms, like, mu have muscles, but no, muscles like the fucking, you know, the food. The, 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 what is it, a mollusk? The knight stares at you in shock. You didn't expect you to say such things so bluntly. You wince as he hits you with his club, sending you flying across the room into a wall. When you respawn, you're back at the hospital without anything beside the clothes on your back. I died... ...again. How the fuck does this keep happening? I keep respawning, dying, respawning. I don't know if I'm a ghost. I'm getting hit with clubs. I'm dying again. Sadly, this is the worst death in game. You keep the same username and everything, but in game you have nothing but the clothes on your back. <laughs> Why do you look so sad? The first booze you ever encounter ask as he passes through you. Nothing, you answered sadly. Die. First, before anything else, pick a username. Any name will do. Although, if you could put some effort into it, that'd be great. Also note that each player is assigned a life, through, though multiple players can share a life if the players involved agree to it, and post together when they start a journey. Select... <laughs> select username... Pinto. <laughs> what the fuck?! You open your eyes to a sloping green fields and cloudy blue sky. Uh, sky. The wind carries the smell of grass and adventure. You can't help but take a deep breath. You check your inventory, which consists of a wooden sword and leather clothing, before setting off. A grin creeps across your face as you spot a town on the horizon. What the f- Go to town. I- Chat, I don't know if I can stop this. It just keeps throwing- We went from Animal Crossing Scoot to, like, Drake Pirate to- you walk through the town gates and stare at the stalls around you, all selling different items from fresh vegetables to books. You don't have any money, however. Princes, a voice says, making you jump. You turn to see a short girl with light brown hair and a bun smiling at you. Princes. I am a... I am not a prince. I am a mere... adventurer... adventurer? Peasant scum looking for fun and gold. Ah, but everybody is a prince inside, she says, raising an eyebrow. I'm Linda, by the way. You look at Linda and raise an eyebrow. It was a nice try, but I'm not paying for your services. Fun isn't free, my friend. Linda smiles. What brings you to town? I seek fun. What kind are you offering?
Linda raises an eyebrow then gestures, gestures towards an old house behind her. Room and board, she says simply. In that case, you begin. But first, you must pay Hans the troll. You walk through a small wooden door and find yourself in a bizarre room. These shrimp fresh. Hans the troll. Something has to be fucking weird with the AI chat. So, food. Hans gestures around the room. What would you like? There's a massive pile of various foods, meats, vegetables, fruits, and even rarer treats like honeycomb and caviar. I'd like a... McClanky, please. Hans nods. He raises his hand and a large black pot appears in its grasp. He puts it down at the counter and pulls out a large green crab. Next he points his finger and the crab is cooked in a flash of blue fl uh, fire. He picks up the pot and places it on the table along with two bowls and two spoons. Eat. The. McClanky. Is it a crab or is it a gherkin? As you tuck in, you hear a loud popping sound. You turn to see a small man with black horns sticking on his forehead and wearing an orange uniform step through the door. You have been flagged as a potential terrorist by ultra sick security solutions. You have the right to remain. The goblin begins. <laughs> what? Is it, is it medieval or is it future? What? What year is it? What year is it? Year 11, the goblin nods. So what's the point of a security system that doesn't tell you there's a terrorist in your hotel, you ask pointedly. The year doesn't matter to you. What matters is you're not getting your money back, the goblin says happily. Throw the green crab at the goblin and, es and escape. What randomness setting is this on? You pick up the crab and hurl it at the goblin. The crab hits him in the face and he slams into the wall, sliding on the floor. Escape. You burst out of the hospital and run down the street. You hear goblin curses following you as you run. What is a goblin curse anyway? You turn a corner and manage to escape, finding yourself at the town's tavern, the green man. You head inside quickly, paying for a beer. You head to the bathroom and merge into the shadows, waiting for your pursuers. Gank the first fucker that opens the bathroom door. You hear the door open and pounce, covering the interloper's mouth and stabbing them through the neck. You push the body into the stall and drink the blood dripping from the wound. It tastes fairly tur turmeric. What? Binch You're bleeding, a voice says. Crouching, you creep closer to the door. Slice. I just sliced binch You creep up to the doorway and peer into the hallway, although there's far more space between the wall and the stalls than you're comfortable with. You edge forward until you can see just into the hallway. You see two uniformed goblins standing in the hall, guns held steadily in their hands, one saying something in a strange language. The other laughs. Say, Kapusi. I just want to see what would happen. I, year, yeah, there's guns in year 11, apparently. One of the goblins laughs. She says, he begins, that even an officer would have trouble hitting the broad side of a barn at this range. The other goblin laughs. You creep closer until you're just at the edge of the doorway, almost enough, close enough to slice their heads off. You raise your sword. Kill the goblins.
Swish, slice, thud, glug, glug. You swing your sword, slicing through the first goblin's neck and into the wall behind him. You withdraw the blade and slam it into the second goblin's skull, killing him instantly. Blood from both of them mixes together and flows down the drain. The blood creates a sort of sacrificial magic and an ancient evil is unleashed upon the world in year 11. That's right, it's the Hemogoblin. Thanks, Obama. <laughs> Holy shit! Oh. Oh, that's amazing. <laughs> that's so good. All of this is your fault. You failed. <laughs> and the moral of <laughs> the story is... <laughs> <laughs> this is a perfect time for a moral. Don't do drugs! I mean, it, it kind of... Yeah, there were drugs. It started with weed, and then it turned into a weird toad, a psychedelic toad. You got score 0%. Oh, come on, that was too harsh even for me. Let's try again. You're 10. I can't even go to another pre-screening, you whisper into the phone, checking over your shoulder for Miss Quattlebaum. Your lovable little old language arts teacher. I'm busted. Binched. Your friend Hopdef says, "Don't be such a wuss." It it was a close call last time, but I saved your skinny Arabic loving arse. What the fuck is it doing? Don't worry, you say. I have to go home and finish my chem homework anyway. Binched. Come on, you're still not doing that. I thought you after you hacked into the school district, you changed all your F's to A's. They'd stop making you do it. We're hackers? Okay, I can't deal with this anymore. Let, let's just... Let's check the settings and do a new one. That was completely chaotic and very nonsensical. It's on Dragon, chat. Randomness is 1.2, default is 1. So it's not even like... Yeah, it's not even like that random. What happens if you turn it up? We, we don't want to turn it up, trust me. Your name is Miles Edward O'Brien. You are the chief transporter operator aboard the Enterprise. D. You have just been cloned, and you feel queasy. How do you spell queasy? Que <laughs> and you feel queasy. The ship is in danger, but you don't know why. I'm sorry, says Captain Kirk. It's a new body. What do we do, asks Mr. Spock. No, that's a redo. Come on, Kirk and Spock on the Enterprise D? You take a deep breath and try to focus on your mission. This isn't working for you, so you return to the transporter room where Captain Kirk has arrived with two officers. They look worried too. What's wrong, Captain Kirk? Okay.
You were the chief transport aboard the Enterprise D. You serve under Captain Picard, and Worf is is there. You see a tall, dark man with black hair wearing a white lab coat standing before you. He looks like he might be your father. His eyes are blue and his face is thin. Your mother would look very much like him if she were alive today. Say, Papa. Oh, O'Brien. Is that really you? You know what? No, fuck that. That's, what is that? That's lame. Sorry, we need to get out of here. <laughs> Something's wrong. You look over at your co-pilot who has a worried expression on his face. He turns away from you, starts packing, pacing back and forth nervously. You try not to stare too long into his eyes, but it seems like he can see right through you now. Your own eyes start to water as well. We need to get to the captain and tell him the ship is in danger. You take a moment to step out of the room and tell one of the security guards that you need to see the captain. He doesn't ask questions. He just says that he will go and get him for you. You head back inside and spend a few more minutes sitting in silence. It's not... It's trying its best, chat. Eventually, the two guards arrive. The captain says that you... You need to see both of us during this time, although he said he would prefer that we tell the medical staff that we did the security rounds every 10 minutes instead. I don't know what happened before you got here, but he seemed pretty angry about it. The ship is in danger. The tetri tetrionic pulse em emitters have been misaligned and only one man can fix the problem. <laughs> your palms begin to sweat. You feel water run down your back. The room begins to swirl around you as you attempt to get up from the chair. Each part of this room is unfamiliar to you. The instruments, the style, all of it seems alien. Sir, do you need help? One of the guard asks. I'm, I'm dying. My clone has stolen my life force. Only he can fix the emitters. Sir, you look fine. I'm serious! He's killing me! The other guard speaks up. Well, why don't you tell us what happened from the beginning? He says calmly. I don't have time. I need to see the captain. They just don't care. Like, O'Brien is getting no respect whatsoever right now. Sir, please, this will only take a moment. You look back at him and slowly try to explain everything that happened in the last few minutes. When you mention your piloting officer, the guard's eyes open wide. He doesn't say anything. You continue to speak, attempting to get across the seriousness of the matter. Please, I'm, I'm dying. Wait a moment, sir. Don't die yet. We still need to ask you a couple more questions. The guard cuts you off and motions to his ear. We're being sent to inform you that a shuttle will be arriving in five minutes. You look at him curiously, wondering what the shuttle has to do with anything. Also, given how secret this whole project was, you find it strange that, that a shuttle is checking on you. The pilot is Worf. Hmm. One of them says, reading your mind. You smile in recognition at the name. One of the best battlefield tactics in history was when Cisco, Picard, Data, and Worf boarded the Defiant to capture the Maquis prisoners. <laughs> when was this mission? This sounds like a good mission. Wait for Worf and try not to die.
As the two bluish, blue uniformed crew members leave you, you again look around the room. The walls are off-white and made of some hard fiber. The floor is black, alien wood with swirls and patterns carved into it. You see what looks like a mirror hanging on one of the walls and stand up to take a look. You look like a goblin man. Your skin has taken on a greenish hue and your eyes are yellow with slitted pupils. You also have fangs that now stretch almost halfway down your mouth when your mouth is closed. You quickly sit back in your chair and wait for Worf. You can't die here. You have so much left to do. Worf arrives, but doesn't recognize O'Brien. I think O'Brien went warp, uh, warp 10. Or <laughs> Wharf 10. You stand up to greet him, but he looks at you, and you see a hint of hatred in his eyes. You didn't think clones could still recognize each other, but Wharf has. Wharf, don't be like that, you say. Who are you, and what are you doing with my friend? I'm the real O'Brien. Worf looks at you for a moment, then grabs your shoulder, twisting it and flipping you into the air. You flip head over heels and back first into the floor. Blood trickles down your head as you push yourself up, facing the Klingon. Worf, listen to me! This is getting good. You say, clone, he whispers, as if realizing something. On your feet! Worf pulls a batleth from his side and draws it out. As you follow his lead, it's a, a Klingon like weapon chat. You stand up and pull your own batleth from its sheath behind your back. Fight <laughs> Worf to the death. <laughs> Why does O'Brien have a batleth? <laughs> What's he doing with one? Oh, he is a goblin now, I guess. You're not about to let this go unanswered, considering you've spent your whole life training to fight people like Worf. His bulky stature doesn't seem to offer much agility, however, so you can avoid a heavy blow. You might come out on top. Worf twirls the blade a few more times before charging at you with a yell. Wow. This is like really good Star Trek shit. He swings his blade down at your arm, but you manage to block it just in time pushing the blacksmith's sword away from your forearm. You jab at Worf's chest, but miss. As he stepped back, he swings his sword again, this time at your legs. Worf, listen to me. There's an evil clone of me on the ship right now. You need to stop fighting me, and we, we need to tell the captain together I was dying but now I'm okay apparently goblin powers I suppose have activated Worf steps back and looks at you with narrow eyes then he drops his blade to the floor it is no use I can't do it he says apologies petty officer O'Brien did, did he get demoted <clears throat> he's, he's a petty officer now you sheath your sword and realize how much clanging you've been doing the past two minutes. You turn to Worf. None needed, sir. I know we need to move on from here. Worf nods. The door swishes open and landing party flies out, led by Captain Picard and Worf. Oh, oh, okay. We need to find my clone and kill him. Is this another Worf? Lieutenant Hardy nods. I'll get on it, sir, he says. You nod at him while taking a glance at the mess around you. The corridors seem awfully quiet for how chaotic it was just moments ago. You watch as more engineers than you can count begin repairing faulty systems and damage towards the rear of the ship. You wander off to take a piss when you come across your clone, Kyle. Oh. Fuck. How do I do that again, chat? I need to...
Kyle O'Brien. That's exactly what I was going to say. <laughs> he looks up at you, to you with a mix of fear and awe. He says something that you do not understand, and his diction is poor, and his lisping is atrocious. You <laughs> ask him to say that again, slower this time. I just wanted, um, to know if you were the real noob. I'm not the noob. It's boob. Ooh. Noob, sir. You are. Really? He asks. I am? Wow! He pulls out a knife from seemingly nowhere and lunges forward to stab you with it. Urgh! You grunt while parrying the knife blow with your hand. You drive your fist into his face, feeling his nose crunch against your knuckles as he falls backwards. Talk shit. Get. Hit. Scrub. Kyle O'Brien fucking destroyed. He looks up at you and begins to whimper. I'm sorry, sir. I couldn't resist. Please don't kill me. You take... You look down at him and watch as his pupils shrink to dots, his skin rapidly paling. Take a... What are those called again? A, a piss? A, and don't do it again. <laughs> Orf. Get over here and throw this noob in the brig. What did you think of him? The noob? He should not have tried to kill me with a knife. That was incredibly stupid. You exit the hollow deck and meet with Captain Picard in his ready room. You tell him of his reckless behavior with the blacksmith. He cracks a faint smile while twirling around in his chair. S spinning. Sir? Was it all a hollow deck episode? He stops, realizing what he was just doing, and clears his throat. <coughs> yes, you, you were right to report me to Lieutenant Worf. The blacksmith has been building too large of a grudge, trivializing serious matters. She will be transferred off the ship. I was thinking you could still teach her about sword fighting nonetheless. I'm not much of an expert, sir. I'm a simple man. I like... Corn, beef, hash, and a beer. It's true, he does. I like to sit by the transporter and wait for eight hours while nothing happens, sir. Maybe you could send her to a Klingon master. One taught you? Probably. To pass down the skills, so to speak. I don't think that was a Klingon master, sir. I think it was a holodeck file that just had his name in it. He raised his eyebrow. Excuse me? You shift your captain's chair while you explain yourself further. Wait, what? Shift in your captain's chair? No. Let's try again. Kyle O'Brien... Kyle O'Brien, does that leave things too easy for students, sir? No, I'll, What? Huh? Of course I'll help your inco incompetent... I can read, I swear to God. Of course I'll help your incompetent arm piece, you say. But she should remain on board. You catch sight of the captain applauding you unintentionally. Yes, we wouldn't want to lose our beloved sword fight champion, no matter how incompetent the one he faces. This has gotten really stupid, so I'm just going to say PP. Pee -pee. I, I tried, chat. I don't know what's happening anymore. I mean, it was good for a little while, at least. Captain Picard looks at you confused. Sir, do aliens use the restroom the same way we do? Sir, yes, sir. He lets out a chuckle, shaking his head. <laughs> No wonder the blacksmith lost so badly. She was off her game due to diarrhea. <laughs> he 
he says, roaring with laughter. Yes. Yes, sir. Fecal funny. <laughs> He stops laughing. Spend the rest of the day with the blacksmith and show her around, then bring her to my ready room when you're finished. Aye, aye, sir. You exit the room, meet the blacksmith outside. What was that, she asks. Captain Picard wants us to, um, you trail off. Go to the bathroom. Together. He, her eyes widened. What? She laughs? Yes, you reply with extreme confidence, causing her to laugh even louder. It's for research. We need to use the bathroom. Lieutenant da Data will monitor impartially. No, it's, this is not, it's not porn. It's data will be there. It's, it's impartial. You know, he's just, he's an android. He doesn't care about this stuff. Blacksmith stares at you, not saying a word. One of her eyes twitches slightly. All right, show me the bathroom, she responds. You grab her arm and begin pulling her towards the bathroom. What are you doing? She asks you to open the door. I'm showing you the lavatory. It's impartial. I need you to- I'm not stupid, she says, cutting you off. I know what a bathroom is. I mean, why are you showing me? Captain Picard wants us to work together. Blacksmith's eyes widen again. He, he said that? He wants us to work together? Yes. She lets out a hearty laugh. Yes, haha, <laughs> yes. What's so funny, you say, annoyed. Blacksmith says nothing, but instead continues to laugh. This annoys you even further, causing you to grab and shake her. You got something to say? She stops laughing, but wears a smile. Okay. You and the blacksmith work together. I don't know what's going to happen. Maybe it'll, they'll just work together. Surprisingly, she's not completely incompetent. You managed to win a few fights due to her actually being tactically intelligent. You both survived the incident with only minor injuries, and Captain Picard promotes you to Lieutenant Junior Grade. Fuck yeah, from Petty Officer to Lieutenant Junior Grade. Unfortunately, a blue barrel falls on O'Brien's spine and severs it. This does not interfere with his duties as transporter chief. <laughs> the AI doesn't know what to do. I'm more than happy to abandon the pissing together plotline. Oh man, come on. Chat, it has no idea how to handle this. Year 2380, Ensign Blacksmith and you are sitting in pa Captain Picard's ready room. You're not here to discuss your, your future, he begins. You're here to discuss hers. Captain, oh god, I don't know what's happening. You transfer to the security department under Odo and continue fighting crime. The rest of the story involves you eventually marrying the blacksmith and having seven healthy kids. You live happily ever after on a nexus of your own creation. Sick. And the moral of the story is... Smooth it under a rug. What? 
What does that mean? What do you do? I am stream. Link removed. Then he doing top 10 moments of the story is a fun thing to do. One, when O'Brien became a goblin. Goldbin. Why do I keep typing goblin? Goldbin. God damn it. V2. When N. Brown became captain of the Enterprise E. When Grox the fake messiah warps and steals a planet. When a bucket falls on Grox's head. Who the fuck are these people? None of these people were in the story. When N. Blacksmith tries to cheat and steal your planet. When Salzat chat name... When Salzat chat name in flames. When Yu Yu Army declared war on new communism. All of them. When Grox seduced Jedi Kit Fisto to his sept. When Michael Jordan married Black Harriet. When Salzat and Thrall trekked across the Dune Sea. What? Water... W, water, W. Other stuff that's fit to know. Red sores are a fantasy creature native to the planet Utopian. They're hunted and used as national animal. Salzat was based off of Vlad Tepesh, a.k.a. the Impaler. The Borg are cybernetic creatures in the 24th century who seek to assimilate all organic life into their collective. The Blues are extraterrestrial race evolved from the planet Blue, hence the name. They are led by Sal Salzat, an unsufferable wannabe hedonist god. Salzat wrote all of the stories up until V7. David Z and Thrall are the same person. He started writing in from a new account after getting banned. Mr. M Muscula had gills as a child. It's good to know about Mr. Muscula. I would have... I really would have never known. Kit's father is Will Dripped Farlane. Kit's mother... Mother's sister is Heather Dolern. Salzat was inspired to become a sadist due to the fact that his parents punished him too much. Lesson, stay on the right side of history, comrade. <laughs> what the fuck happened here? Good story. We're going to do a cyberpunk story real quick. Character's name, Kapusi. Very quick. You're, um, Kapusi, a punk living in the futuristic city of Zyle. Zale. Small Zor blaster hidden in your jacket, hollow band on your wrist. You wake up in a dark alley, bruises all over your body. You have no idea what happened. You stand up to see a strange liquid leaking from a pipe onto your shoe. It burns your foot. You realize you don't remember how you got here or even who you are. The city looks the same, but it's as if it's all brand new to you. A screen in a nearby wall flickers to life. It shows a mysterious figure. Welcome to, to the Quiz Protectorate. Wander. Wander to a shrimp to a food vendor. Vendor. A reptilian hisses from his stand. The best couscous can sail. Try one for a bit of change. You realize you haven't eaten in quite a while. You take out your credit chip and tap to pay for the ten couscous and guzzle them down. Say, these shrimp fresh Ten full couscous chat. That'll keep you very satisfied. No, the reptile snarls. 
They're stored for a while. That'll be 40 units. You hand him the cred chip and get your chart, your change. You take one more look at the wall screen, which is currently advertising vodka on a Tuesday. Aqua Farms. The reptile looks at you for a moment, shoved a bunch of couscous in a tank, and pumped in oxygen from the aquifers. That'll be... You exit to quickly continue your newfound adventure through Zale. <laughs> Notice a pedestrian glitching through a cyber car. It's just like a real video game, just walking away from an NPC while they're talking to you. When he registers in your vision, it, he appears as if through a broken stream of data. He begins to morph into another form. Then it ends all too suddenly. He writes himself and continues on his way. What the? You mutter to yourself. You set off down the street in the direction opposite of the man's path. Something is very wrong with this world. You come upon a fork in the road. One street is a series of odd inflatable toys blocking it off. A large sign that says caution. The other is, dead end is a dead end tunnel. You don't see what's so special about either street, so you turn to your hollow band for guidance. Look for... What am I looking for, chat? Look for the PP store. You follow the signs and wind up back at the fork in the road. There's no shopping district here, you think, as you choose the long tunnel. The tunnel slowly slopes downward for what seems like miles. All the while, ca caution, wet floor signs line both sides of the road. If you didn't watch my cyberpunk streams, there actually was a PP store, by the way. Anybody here? Terrified voice responds, Who is there? Patrick. Who? My name is Patrick. Who are you? Who are you? Suddenly an unseen person wearing a breathing mask appears from the shadows. The person is dressed in a hazmat suit. Why have you come here? The per person in the hazmat suit responds to your greeting. Have you seen... Keanu... Chungus Reeves anywhere? The person in the hazmat suit stares at you. Then they end the conversation by retreating back into the shadows. You follow the tunnel and find yourself on a street you've never seen before. Look for Keanu Chungus Reeves. The street is very dark and abandoned. The only sound you can hear is the buzzing of a nearby neon sign. Can I get out of the van? Sorry, van. Rain, you hear a drunken voice say in the distance. You follow the voice and come across a massive building with a neon sign flashing Chungus Hotel. Keanu must be here. <laughs> the door doesn't open. Instead, you hear a voice from a box next to the door. Who's there? It's, it's Patrick, you respond. What do you want, the box asks. I'm here to see Keanu. I guess I'm Patrick. I thought my name was Kapulsi. No visitors allowed. You hear a sigh from the other end, and then everything goes black. You wake up in a dingy hotel room tied to a chair. Keanu. The big Chungus Reeves is eyeing 
you down with a gun to your head. Why are you trying to access room 587? He asks. What? I never, you respond. You feel the bullet enter and exit your head before Keanu turns off the lights and speaks. Maybe this is a lesson for you, ghost. For you, ghost. Tell the truth. How am I alive? He just shot me. Even the AI doesn't know what to do. Okay, I'm dead, but I was looking for you because I want an autograph. While Keanu ponders your response, you manage to squirm out of your restraints. The large man pulls the trigger, but only manages to shoot you again and again in the head. ONLY manages! You collapse on the floor, but remain conscious even after he finishes shooting off your toes. Keanu. The... Big... Chung... Bung. Please, my man. I need... an... I need a hollow graph for my father. He's a big fan. You'd better watch it, Keanu says as he steadily makes his way to the door. Or what, you think, as you try to laugh through your injuries. Your laughs are cut short when Keanu comes back from more, wielding a hatchet. As Keanu begins chopping off your fingers, all you can do is scream in protest. Come on, man! I just... want... Reddit gold. Please. I need a 100 wholesome... from you... now... my dude. Keanu, the big Chungus Reeves, has no sympathy for a Redditor in need! <laughs> and continues chopping. First it's your fingers and the funny noises they make, then it's your arms, legs, and other fingers. Finally, he closes in on your face. Poor Patrick. My... my man, please. I came here to get an up dude. I'd really... Appreciate if you could hook me up before killing me. Keanu, please. After chopping off your face, Keanu realizes that he can perform facials yourself. Somewhat successfully, after days of pain and darkness lasting agony, which is for some reason or another you're still conscious to experience, you finally die, only to become part of the Reddit Horror Club collection. Keanu. Why did you kill me, bro? This is anti-poggers. I was gonna give you... A lot of up votes. Oops. <laughs> Is all I hear before I am forced to face my maker. What a waste. Seriously though, Keanu, you suck for killing me like that. Press F to- PRESS F TO PAY RESPECT! <laughs> oh god, what is wrong with me? <laughs> and the moral of the story is... <laughs> Try-
trust no one because you will never know when Keanu, <laughs> the big chunk, <laughs> the big chungus Reeves, will kill you in cold blood. <laughs> Amen. <laughs> Credits. <laughs> Credits, Big Chungus. Top. Top. Is from the two, June. No, I'm not reading. Top 10 wholesome Reddit moments from this story are. I didn't hit enter. I don't know why it's freezing. when Keanu didn't buy epic reddit gold Lamau. Keanu the big chungus Reeves is number two Patrick's death scream and the close-up beheading picture Keanu shutting down the website after killing Patrick Keanu's profile page on reddit empty except for one comment six nothing two making you pay a hundred dollars for the first time serving Keanu three again didn't let you in the cult because you killed fatty four when you killed when he killed you, you chopped off your face when he stooped to a level below Hitler by strangling fatty in the hospital bed what the fuck why does Hitler get involved in this and last but not least when the hell did fatty get a job all right well I have to stream some Animal Crossing now so um, we'll just leave this here a bunch of new tabs just opened on your web browser. Some are two cat videos, others are adorable puppies doing cute things videos. You can't help but smile as you watch them until another video starts auto-playing. Wholesome 100. Real surprise. It's this is it's addictive chat. I, I want to see you watch a video of new call map official trailer is auto played Advertisement for a game called Caw, a game about cartoon animals trailer shows three cartoon porcupines dancing around making silly faces at the camera While it's some sort of rap music Keanu giveth and Keanu Taketh let's end it there. Let's end it there. We're gonna end it there and then we'll go visit some fake animals in Animal Crossing. Please send letters of condolences to the address on my Twitter, or maybe if you're feeling adventurous, visit me in my new home. I hear New Zealand is lovely this time of year. Thanks. Patrick. Well, AI Dungeon never fails to disappoint. Wait. Never fails to disappoint. How many... Never fails to dis... How many negatives is that? That's three negatives. It, it never fails to a point. It, it's good, is what I'm trying to say. It's good. It's very good. Alright, everybody. Thank you for watching AI Dungeon. I'm gonna take a quick BRB. We've got ten minutes before, uh, you know, 2021. And I already hear fireworks. Give me just a couple minutes to get Animal Crossing set up. From within your mind, no one else can find the light that you inspire. Animal Crossing and the countdown up next will play for like a half hour, 45 minutes or so. Maybe a little bit more. Be right back. <laughs>